Lift up my soul In you I trust Oh my God Do not let me Be put to shame Nor let my enemies Triumph over me Show me your ways and Teach me your paths Guide me in truth Lead me on For you're my God You are my Savior My hope is in you Each moment of the day No one whose hope is in you Will ever be put to shame That's why my eyes are
Show me your ways and teach me your paths. Guide me in truth, lead me on. For you're my God, you are my Savior. My hope is in you each moment of the day. be put to shame. That's why my eyes are on you. Oh Lord, surround me, defend me, oh how I need you. To you I lift up my soul, to you I lift up my soul. Mercy and love that ever flow from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, our service of worship here on this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, this is worship brought to you by the Anglican Church in Ellesmere Port. My name is the Reverend Canon Gordon McGuinness. I'm the rector of the parish, and together with Gordon Welsh and members of our congregation, we're bringing you this service of worship this morning. If you're new to our parish or new to our online worship, you're very welcome. If you want to know more about us, what we stand for, what we believe, then you can uh, find us uh, on www.ellesmereportparish.co.uk and uh, we'll be very happy to uh, contact you. You can email us, you can post a prayer, you can find out what's going on both in this time of lockdown and in the normal life of the parish. Now we have some notices before we begin, but before I put the notices up, just to have a confession to make, which is that... Um, I usually find out about people's birthdays from my Facebook page. Um, friends who are on Facebook, their birthdays tend to get posted. Uh, when I looked at Facebook this morning, I couldn't find any birthdays in and around this date. So if you know somebody who has got a birthday, not on Facebook, obviously, or not my Facebook page anyway, uh, please put their name in the uh, comments box so that we can later on in the service offer them a virtual sweetie as a way of celebrating their birthday. So, let's have a look at the notices for this week. Uh, some dates for your virtual diary. On July the 26th, that's uh, next week, um, we're going to be having uh, a first in the life of the parish. We're going to be having a virtual service at St. Lawrence Church via Zoom. Now, this will be a first, but it will allow the folks of St. Lawrence to see each other and to worship together led by Reverend Gordon Welsh and Frank Maudsley. So if you're part of the St. Lawrence congregation who are dipping into this worship, then that's for you next week at half past 11. At the end of the month, on Thursday the 30th, we're going to begin the START course online again via a Zoom meeting. If you'd like to take part in that, or you know somebody who would, I'll be putting out an Eventbrite um, notice, and you'll be able to sign up from that either via our Facebook page, uh, or the Faith in a Time of Corona page, or via our website. <clears throat> now, with the lifting of lockdown and the reopening of our churches, we want to find out who wants what going forward. Some people will be eager to get back to church, and we want to know how many that might be, because we are limited in numbers. Some will want to be staying online, not coming to church perhaps because of health reasons or because of the health of other members of their family. So we'd like to know what you're looking for going forward, whether it's one or the other, or a mixture of both. And we're going to try to put together a mixed economy of worship in the buildings online 
to suit everybody and to draw us back together as much as possible as a community of faith. The property in Seymour Drive has been cleaned out, the garden's been tidied up, a lot of rubbish has gone in a skip, and we're now ready to sell the old vicarage on Seymour Drive. If you remember, the monies we get from Seymour Drive will be going towards the Beacon Project. Um, that's our a renovation project, our reordering of St. Thomas Church. Now, the project's on hold for the moment, but the financial needs of it are not. So the, product, the monies we get from the sale of Seymour Drive will go towards that project. So please pray uh, for myself, Jill, and Mike, and Diana Burton, who are overseeing this sale. And can you keep your giving going? We're very grateful to everyone who's been sending in checks or putting money through in envelopes through my door or the door of the church. And uh, with Barclays Bank not yet open in uh, Ellesmere Port, though I'm told it's going to be soon, we're taking those monies to Barclays in Chester and banking them. And so we're usually counting up every fortnight or so. And it's really, really encouraging to see that people are giving generously, even though they're not being able to come to church. Please keep your giving going. Uh, we need it to keep the church um, on its financial course. And final note is just to let you know that Jill is on holiday for another week. So if you have any um, questions or queries or things you'd normally discuss with her, then give me a ring or drop me an email and I'll see what I can do. So those are our notices. Let's just pause for a moment as we go into our opening prayer. You say the words in bold. In the beginning, when it was very quiet, the word was with God. And what God was, the word was. In the beginning, when it was very dark, God said, let there be light. And there was light. When the time was right, God sent the Son. He came among us. He was one of us. And so let's have a time of sung worship in song and psalm as we come into the presence of Almighty God and as he welcomes us eagerly into his company. Come, now is the time to worship.
we continue in our worship with the words of Psalm 124. As I read the psalm, you may want to read it with me, or you may want to just read the verse that strikes you in particular, or through which God is speaking to you this morning. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Let all Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on the side when people attacked us? They would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken and we are free. Our help is from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. In the presence of such a God and in the knowledge of his great love, shown in our salvation through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we respond by singing, All Hail the Lamb. praises and reflected on God's greatness in the Psalms, so we move to a time of receiving his word and offering our intercessions and gathering around his table. So we offer this prayer of preparation. You can find the liturgy on the Church of England website if you wish or on our Facebook page or on our website. But we say to God, we're ready and we're willing and we want to be in your company this morning. So let's say together this prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the things we do a lot of these days is clean our hands. Personal hygiene has become more than a matter of just politeness. 
but it's a very lifesaver. And as we think about the hygiene protocols we need to live in a coronavirus world, how much more do we need to be clean on the inside when we come into the presence of the living God? God is only too willing to forgive, to cleanse and to renew. Are we as willing to confess, to say sorry to him and to others? Let's offer our prayers of penitence to God this morning. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. So we say together our confession prayer. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Loving Christ, hanged on a tree, yet risen in the morning, scatter the sin from our souls as the mist from the hills. Begin what we do, inform what we say, redeem who we are. For in Christ we place our hope, our great hope, our living hope, this day and evermore. Amen. And so having washed our hands, we now open our hearts and our minds to receive God's word. First, our collect, the collect set for today. We say together, Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel and Nettie Riley will be reading it for us. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30, the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed good seed in his field. One night when everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plants grew and the ears of corn began to form, then the weeds showed up. The man's servants came to him and said, Sir, it was good seed you sowed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? It was an enemy who did this, he answered. Do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? They asked him. No, he answered, because as you gather the weeds, you might pull up some of the wheat along with them. Let the wheat and the weeds both grow together until harvest. Then I will tell the harvest workers to pull up the weeds first tie them in bundles and burn them, and then to gather in the wheat and put it in my barn. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Let's begin with a prayer. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. When we look at what's happening in the Middle East or indeed the problems of poverty in our world or even in our own country and the effect of the virus, we might be tempted, and many people are, to ask, why doesn't God do something? If God is good and loving and all-powerful, why doesn't he put an end to such suffering and such injustice? Well, what this parable of the wheat and the weeds does is to invite us to think just a little bit more deeply about just that question. Now, it doesn't give any answers, but then perhaps there are no easy answers. In the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at some of the parables of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, and we found that they're not straightforward. They need a bit of thinking about, and each one has a twist. 
And this one's no exception, except that in a sense the twist is the obvious good sense of the farmer, the main character. Now he's prepared his land and sowed good wheat seeds, and then at night while everyone is asleep an enemy comes and sows weeds among the wheat. Some Bible versions call them tares. And tares are weeds which look very much like wheat, especially when they're young. In time the wheat comes up, but of course so do the weeds. And the farm workers, the servants, are horrified. They go to the farmer and tell him what's happened. There's the wheat, but also these weeds. They realise an enemy has done it to sabotage the crop and to hurt the farmer. Now the servants want to put things right at once by pulling up the weeds. The farmer though says no. Because if you pull up the wheat, up, up the uh, tares, you will hurt the wheat. We must wait, he says. We must wait until the harvest when the weeds and the wheat can be safely separated. But until then they must grow together and you must be patient. Now, one common explanation of the parable is that the farmer is God and the field is the world God has made. It's a good world, but the enemy, the devil, has come along and put evil people into the world. The harvest is the end of the world, followed by the last judgment. Nothing can be done for the moment, but at the last judgment, the bad people will be condemned and go to hell, and all the good people will go to heaven. OK, that's one explanation. But it does seem to me to be a bit black and white. Is it really possible to divide people up in this way into good and bad? As church-going Christian people, we might like to feel we would be counted as wheat, as the good people. But can we really, really look into our hearts and say that we're free from evil? See, what the Bible actually says is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All of us are mixtures of good and bad, generous and mean, loving and hateful, the old nature and the new nature, as Paul puts it in his epistles. Which means there is no clear dividing line between good and evil. In this world, it's all mixed up together. It's not to say that some people aren't worse than others, but that's not the point. If it's only the pure wheat that's going to be sorted out on the last day, and the weeds are going to be burnt, then all of us, all of us are for the furnace. And that's why Jesus died for all of us. He died to pay the price we couldn't pay. He did for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Jesus' death on the cross has brought us life and now God is able to forgive us and to make us his children. But of course we can refuse. We can refuse to be his children. We can turn our backs on him and rebel against him. In the end, the choice is ours. We can call him Abba Father and accept his love and the glory that he promises in Jesus. Or we can push it away. But let's go back to the parable. The farmer in the parable says, no, we can't separate the wheat from the weeds. And if the dividing line between wheat and weeds runs through each human heart, then you can understand why. So he tells his servants to be patient and to let both wheat and weeds grow in the field until harvest time. Now, patience is not easy especially when there's so much wrong in the world. People are always ready to follow leaders who promise a quick fix and spurn those that say that situations are complex and difficult and need working at. And indeed, such leaders are very often ready to fix the blame on other groups. But that's something else. But the truth is that quick fixes of that sort always have unintended consequences and may well make any situation worse rather than better. What Jesus' parable tells us is that even God 
doesn't have a simple solution to the problem of evil in our world. So why doesn't God do something? Well, of course, he has. He gave his son to take our human nature, to live and die and to rise again for us. He has dealt with sin and suffering and evil by the cross. And now we wait for the consequences of that to work through. But we do have to wait and perhaps wait until the end of time. So what will happen then? Do we want to be counted as wheat or as weeds? We have a choice. Those who reject God can have no part in that king coming kingdom because that's what they've chosen to do, to exclude themselves. At the end of time, we will all face judgment and those who wish to belong to God will be healed and recreated and given God's glory and come into their inheritance as his children. Because the coming kingdom will be a place of justice and peace and happiness where God will be at the centre and surrounded by his people. But to be part of the kingdom, we ourselves need to be recreated. And it needs to be something we want. A time is coming when the chaos and the misery that we see in our world will come to an end. And the world's problems will be resolved. And people will learn to live together in love. But that will mean everything changing. And that's what the Bible calls the last judgment. Until then, the wheat and the weeds in our natures and therefore in the world will continue to grow together. But that's not to say we do nothing and just wait God's Holy Spirit longs to help us to do something about the weeds in our nature. We may not be able to root them out entirely, but we can discourage them and encourage the wheat. And yes, only God can make us into the perfect image of his Son that we are destined to be one day. Only he can make us into his children in fact, as well as in name. But he wants us to work to get towards being his children, where we share his treasures with his son, Jesus. And part of his treasure, of course, are the fruit of the Spirit. I'd like to end with a prayer. It's the prayer of Richard of Chichester, which seems to me to sum it up just so well. So let's pray. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, follow you more nearly, and love you more dearly, day by day. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Gordon, for those wise words this morning. Let's just pause for a moment to allow some aspect of Gordon's sermon to touch us. Maybe the thought that good and evil are in all of us. Maybe something about what God is doing to help our broken world. Perhaps a challenge, what can I do to be part of what God is doing? Let's just pause for a second and let God speak to us. Of course, one of the ways that we become part of the solution rather than part of the problem is to draw near to God, to open our hearts to him and to receive his indwelling, his spirit, that we might be empowered to live life for him. As we say our creed today, we remind ourselves what sort of a God we actually serve and see something of what God wants us to do in this description of him in our short creed. So we say together, we believe in a loving God whose word sustains our lives and the works of our hands in the world. God is life. We believe in God's Son among us, sowing the seed of life's renewal. He lived with the poor to show us the meaning of love. 
Jesus Christ is Lord. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life, making us one with God, renewing our strength with our own. The Spirit is love. So before our intercessions, we remind ourselves that it's all because of him that we are able to be the people God wants us to be. intercessions for Sunday, July the 19th. 
Be still and know that I am God. We come together in a time of quietness to offer up our prayer to our living God, his Son, Jesus Christ. When I say God of love, please respond with, hear our prayer. We offer up our thanks for all that you do in our lives, Lord. We thank you for our families and friends. We ask for your help to sustain good relationships during these difficult times we find ourselves in. We thank you for the privilege of communications, enabling us to keep in touch with each other at times when we can't be with each other. We pray for continuing growth in our new and unexpected relationships that have been made during the pandemic. God of love, hear our prayer. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name over all the earth. We ask for your help so we can continue to be good witnesses in our world by our deeds, actions and words. We ask you to help those who have been become detached from you and are not able to feel your presence in their lives. Please help them, their thoughts to turn to you with the reassurance that you have never abandoned them. Give you minutes silence in your hearts to mention the names before God of anyone who needs to hear his word. God of love, hear our prayer. We thank you Lord for your amazing creation of our world, for the different cultures and environments your people live in. We thank you that during lockdown we were able to appreciate the spring growth in our gardens, the cleaner air, and the noise of the birds and animals of your creation. Help us to be less materialistic and rejoice in all that you generously give us. Allow us to bloom where you have planted us. God of love, hear our prayer. We offer up our concerns for the effects of the pandemic as it reaches more and more parts of our world. We pray that it slows down as it reaches those parts that have little or no resources to help them fight the effects of this disease. Pour out your healing upon our nations and restore our health. We pray for the leaders of our nations, that you give them openness, wisdom and a sense of responsibility to their people. We ask that you help them to listen to the scientists and doctors as the pandemic continues, to enable right decisions and actions to be made, to prevent unnecessary suffering. God, give them the courage to make the decisions for the good of all people. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for our Christian friends in other parts of the world. Please name any places that are on your heart. I ask that you come close to the staff and pupils at Naik Kakatura Memorial High School in Uganda. They are mourning the loss of Irene, who was, who was murdered by thieves during a burglary. Be especially close to her family as they come to terms with such tragic loss. Please be close to all people as they mourn the loss of their loved ones, especially the families of Thomas Draper, Jerome Jones and Valerie Sadowski. Meet them at the point of their deepest need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our clergy as they feel overwhelmed by the changes they have had to make in our church life. Give them rest and reflection as they take their summer breaks. Give them the courage and perseverance with good health too and joyfully continue with the work that is ahead of them. May they be comforted in the knowledge that other church members will offer their help so the workload can be shared. We acknowledge that we are all called to be servants of God, so help us to listen and faithfully carry out his calling in our lives. God of love, hear our prayer. My final prayer comes from Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So thanks to Kath for those prayers this morning. 
We're coming now to our time around the Lord's table and we're going to share the peace with each other. And perhaps in the light of those prayers, but also in the light of Gordon's word to us, we might not just say the words of the peace, but we might pause and reflect on receiving that peace in our own hearts and perhaps sharing that peace with others who don't have it or with whom we need to be reconciled ourselves. So I'm going to share the words of the peace and then we're going to have the song that we've been using the last few weeks. And just during this time of peace, we may be exchanging peace with those who are with us in our homes, but maybe just sitting quietly asking God to give us his peace, but also to inspire us to share his peace with those who need it. On the night when he rose from the dead, Jesus appeared in the locked room where his disciples were huddled together for fear of their enemies and said to them, peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. And so we come now to our time around the table. In a moment, we're going to start the prayers. They're on the, uh, the introductory prayers that are on the service sheet, and then there'll be a simplified prayer uh, from another source as we go forward. And this morning, instead of saying the Lord's Prayer, we're going to listen to it sung in the words of Baba Yetu. Um, sometimes we need to be reminded that the Lord's Prayer is not just simply something we recite on a Sunday morning but it actually is the template for prayer that Jesus gave to his kingdom people, to those who work for him in the field where wheat and tares are mingled together. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, in this place, in the places where we are, the places where we're separated from one another, in this world where wheat and tares abound together. May we know your presence. May we remember that you died for us, rose again, and will return. What we do here, we do in imitation of what Christ first did. To his followers in every age, Jesus gave an example and command rooted in the experience he shared with his disciples in an upstairs room in Jerusalem. To his followers in every age. Sorry, we've had that bit, haven't we? On the night he was betrayed, and as they were sitting at a meal, Jesus took a piece of bread and broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, it is broken for you. Do this to remember me. Later, after they had eaten, he took a cup of wine and said, 
This cup is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Drink this, all of you, to remember me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this wine, the produce of the earth and fruit of human labor. In these, Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ can make us whole. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came, because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same Spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we now share. Get to get to the Binguni, yet to get to Amina Baba, yet to get to the Mgina, La Poeli, to whose way. Baba, yet to get to the Binguni, yet to get to Amina Baba, yet to get to the Mgina, La Poeli, to whose way. Utu Peleo Chekulacheto, Tuna Joy Taji Utu Samehe, Makosa, yet to He. Come on, Nasi Tuna boy was a mehe while I would took a saya. Usi Tuti, Katika, Majaribu, Lakini, Utokue, Nayule, Muovue, Mire.
the sound cut out there, so I'm going to say the words of breaking the bread again. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so now, wherever we are, and whatever we have before us, we give thanks to God and receive through symbol his life, his real life within ours. And now is our time of saying thank you. So if you want to post your thanksgivings on the screen, that would be great. It's always good to say thank you to God. It's also good to share with one another the things for which we're grateful. So in the next few minutes, let's just share our thanksgivings with one another and with God. You may, of course, want to continue posting your thank you prayers um, as we go into the latter part of our service. But for now, we're going to say our closing prayer and then have our final song, after which uh, there'll be a blessing and then we can stick around online to share our news with one another during the virtual coffee time. But let's say together this closing prayer. You say the words in bold. God of the watching ones, the waiting ones, the prayerful and positive ones, the angels in heaven, the child in the womb, give us your benediction, your good word for our souls, that we may rise and rest in the kindness of your company. Amen. God allows the wheat and the tares to grow together, that all might be saved. This truly is amazing grace.
done for me for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Gordon and if you want to know more about St Thomas Church and St Lawrence Church then do give us an email or a text um, from the contact numbers and email addresses on our website. Uh, we just close with a blessing prayer and then it's time for coffee and chat online with those who have been part of this service. Father help us to live this day to the full being true to you in every way. Jesus Help us to be kind to everyone we meet, giving ourselves away to others as best we can. And Spirit, enable us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. So may the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. So it's over to you for our time of coffee together. Um, please do share your news. Don't assume that nobody's interested. In this time of lockdown, hearing how others are getting on is quite precious to us all. So see you uh, this evening at 7 o'clock if you're joining us for prayer and also tomorrow morning for prayer at half past nine. And have a good week. God bless. Bye.
So, folks, we're going to sign off now. Thank you for being with us this morning. As I said earlier, do have a good week and God bless. Bye for now. <laughs>